Okay, so let's start. Is my voice audible to everyone? Just a moment. Yes, is my voice audible right now? Hello. Yes, sir. Yes or no? Yes, can you yes, sir. Huh? Can you hear us, sir? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, your voice is audible, sir. Okay. OK, so let's continue from the last topic. And we will try to finish it off by today, this ecosystem part. So we were understanding about the energy flow. So the energy flow, first, the light, the heat, and the light comes from the sun. The primary source of the energy is the sun. It goes to the first trophic level. First trophic level are called the producers. Second trophic level are called the primary consumers, which feed upon the plants. Third trophic level are the secondary consumers, which are the carnivores, which feed upon the herbivores. Fourth trophic level, which is the tertiary consumers. Okay, so they are called as a top carnivores, which consumes other types of carnivores. Okay. So and then we uh, go on to the process in which there are other are uh, there are other insects which decay upon which consumes the dead organisms okay so they this is how the energy flow um takes place okay from the sun to the producers to the primary consumers secondary consumers and the tertiary consumers which are the plants herbivores carnivores and top carnivores respectively So the amount of energy decreases at successive trophic level. Okay, when an organism dies, it becomes dead biomass. Dead biomass, like the dead uh, remains of something, is called as detritus. It is an energy source for decomposers. Organisms at each trophic level depend on those at the lower trophic level for energy. What it means is that the energy, see, the energy, first, the, there is a lot of energy in the sun, okay? Then as the energy keeps on uh, becoming distributed to different uh, trophic levels, such as primary, secondary, tertiary, and all, from producers, primary, secondary, tertiary, so the energy also keeps on decreasing at each subsequent trophic level. So it is at the highest at sunlight, and it is very low at a dead biomass. Okay, But that also is an energy source for the decomposers. Okay, So this is what it means. The amount of living material in a trophic level at a given time is called standing crop. So just you have to just uh, understand this thing, what the standing crop is. It is the amount of living material. How much is that amount of the material at that trophic level at a given time? OK, so at a subsequent trophic level, the amount, the measurement, the magnitude of that living material is called standing crop. It is measured as the biomass, mass of living organisms, or the number in a unit area. So it is measured in the form of the biomass, that is a unit. Okay. So why it is called biomass? Because it is the weight, the mass is called 
that is why mass and biomass of the living organism. Biomass of a species is measured in terms of fresh or dry weight. Dry weight is more accurate because it is the exact mass of the body, which means constant. What it means is that usually whenever a body is hydrated or some other organism has uh, water inside it, then the actual weight could very much differ. That is why to calculate the biomass, it is very much important to take it into consideration that the dry weight is measured. Because dry weight, which does not have any humidity inside it, which does not have any moisture inside it, doesn't have any level of water or any concentration of water inside it, that is very much accurate as a source of measurement for the biomass of the species. The number of trophic rivers in um, GFC is restricted as it follows 10% laws. Only 10% of energy is transferred to each trophic river from the lower trophic river. Okay. So this is the ecology of the pyramid, as you can see. So at the bottom of the pyramid is the producers' autotrophs. Okay. So upon them, every other consumes them. Okay. So that is why it is called the base or the foundation of the pyramid. It is the um, maximum source of energy. The herbivores consume your plants, the producers. That is why they are at the second stage of the second stage from the base of the pyramid. Then comes the carnivores and then comes the top predators. Okay. So carnivores consume the herbivores, but top predators they consume the most complicated form of the carnivores. Okay. So this is what it means. So now we uh, we know what is the definition of ecological pyramid. It is the representation of a food chain in form of the pyramid. Okay, so it is just that the representation of food chain. So if the question comes in the exam, uh, what does ecological pyramid signifies? What does it represent? So the answer could be there could be three to four options, but the correct answer would be it is it represents the food chain. So such kinds of questions also come in the exam. Okay, the base of a pyramid re represents the producers, the first trophic level. The apex represents the tertiary or top level consumers. So the ecological pyramids are of three types, pyramid of energy, pyramid of biomass, and pyramid of number. So first we know about the pyramid of number. The example of this kind of an ecological pyramid is called as the grassland ecos ecosystem. So the base is base of this ecosystem is the primary producers. The, then comes the pri, uh, primary consumers, then secondary consumers, and third is the tertiary consumers. But what it means is that the number of individuals or entities or the species in that kind of an ecosystem is called as the pyramid of number. The primary producers, the grass, as you can see in the number, it's like almost um, 5 million. So 5 million are the number of these grass species, as you can see in the picture. OK, 700,000, 700,000, 700, 700,800. So wait, 700, 800. So this number, OK, so 7 lakh, 8,000, OK? Um, so that is the number of the primary consumers. So as you can see, this is the second level of consumers, which are highest in number. Third is the number of snakes okay so these are almost three lakh fifty four thousand secondary consumers and the fourth one is the tertiary consumers which are very less in numbers but they feed upon the secondary consumer uh the primary consumer the secondary consumers and those consume the primary consumer and then the primary consumer consumes the primary producers just a moment
Next comes the pyramid of biomass. Okay. So what it means is that it is an ecological pyramid which represents the biomass in the form of the pyramidical structure, uh, like the triangular form. So what it shows is that uh, it shows a sharp decrease in biomass at higher tropic rivers. So at the lowest most position, that is at the base, it has the highest level of biomass, which is of the primary producers. Then um, the level of biomass, the magnitude of biomass, which is measured into kilograms per meter cube, which is a dry weight. Then the, in the second number, it comes at the second stage of the pyramid, which is just above the base of the pyramid, which is the primary consumers. Then the third magnitude of the biomass is at the secondary consumer, and the fourth is at the tertiary consumer. So as you can see, this the highest biomass is at the bottom, which is of the primary producers. The second um, magnitude of the biomass is 37, as you can see in the diagram, which is consumed by the primary consumers. This secondary consumers has third level at, in the form of decreasing order. It is at the third number of the biomass. And the least level of biomass is consisted by the tertiary consumer, which is just 1.5 kilograms per meter cube. Just a moment. So, they, so now it shows also the inverted pyramid of biomass. Okay, it is small standing crop of phytoplankton that supports large standing crop of zooplankton. So what it means to say is that this small standing crop of phytoplankton it supports. So this supports the large standing crop of zooplankton. Okay, so primary producer is supporting the primary. Uh, primary producer is supporting the primary consumer. That is called as the inverted pyramid of biomass. Despite of the fact that there could be less level of biomass in here, as it is an inverted pyramid and not the actual pyramid, but still supposed to see large standing crop of the zooplankton. Next comes the pyramid of energy. The primary producers only 1% of energy in the sunlight available to them into NPP. The tertiary, what it means to say is that if there is 1,000, like 1 million joules of sunlight that comes from, from the sun, okay, it is consumed by the primary producers. 10,000 joules of that energy is consumed by the primary producers. The rest of it is uh, transferred further, okay. So most of it is uh, lost as heat. The next amount of energy is consumed by the primary consumers, which is 1,000 joules. Out of the 1,000 joules, 900 joules is uh, lost as heat, and 100 joules is consumed by the secondary consumers. And tertiary consumer uh, uses only 10 joules. Okay, So this is how the decrease of energy, which that is what it means to say that the primary producers converts only 1% of energy and rest it keeps on decreasing as a pyramid as we keep on climbing upon the pyramid okay so the sun's energy is the highest then primary producers use that 100% energy 10% of that 100% energy is converted and used by the primary consumers 1% of that 10% of energy is consumed by the secondary consumers 0.1% of that 1% of energy is consumed by the third level consumers and that at the last is the apex predators which just consumes only 0.01% is converted into the energy so all that whatever is being uh, decomposed as a whatever is being lost so it is lost in the form of heat and also it is lost to the decomposers also. So when the decomposers uh, decomposes, so it its nutrients are again gone to the primary producers in the form of plants. So decomposers then dies off in the uh, soil, and that that acts as producing the plants or giving birth to the plants, in which the nutrients are recycled and then formed into autotrophs on the producers or the plants. 
So this is how the cycle keeps on repeating itself. The loss of energy and finally to the decomposers and the decomposers energy and nutrients go back to the autotrophs. Any calculation of energy content, biomass or numbers has to include all organisms at that trophic level. So it doesn't mean that if you're calculating the energy content, biomass or the numbers, okay, like we understood about the representation of the pyramid in the form of energy, biomass and the numbers, it doesn't mean that we can include only selected number of organisms at that trophic level. When we have to include that trophic level, we must include all kinds of organisms, okay? A trophic level represents a functional level, not a species as such. Okay, so trophic level does not indicate that, the, like, for example, trophic level of, of a camel. No, not like that. Trophic level of primary consumers, and primary consumers can be any number of species. Primary consumers, secondary consumers, it can consist of n number of species, okay, not just one specific species. A given species may occupy more than one trophic level in the same ecosystem at the same time. What it means is that, for example, um, a species, a bird or an animal, it is not necessary that that animal or that bird would be just remain in that one trophic level as a primary consumer, for example, for instance. Okay, It could also be a possibility that it could um, remain at the primary consumer or uh, primary consumer trophic level and also it could be at a secondary consumer trophic level also. One of the example of uh, this thing is that um, of, of this statement that the given species occupy more than one trophic level is that a sparrow which is a primary consumer when it eats the seed, fruits, bees and it is a secondary consumer when it eats and insects and worms. So a sparrow or some other kinds of bird, it is not that it only eats one kind of producers or autotrophs. It also consumes the primary consumers such as insects and worms. So when it is consuming the producers, it is called as a primary consumer. But when it is consuming, when the sparrow is consuming the primary consumers, then it is called as a secondary consumers. Okay. So if the question comes in the exam that if it could be, you know, true or false or assertion and reasoning that a given species uh, uh, it occupies only one trophic level okay so it could be yes it could be no it could be uh, none of the it could also be not sure or dependent depending upon the situation like that okay so the answer would be that it depends upon uh, like it can occupy more than one trophic level okay so at assertion and reasoning this question could come and then uh, the statement and the example to uh, justify the assertion in the, the example would come in the, in the reasoning to justify the assertion okay so in that way it can also come just to signify the point that a species does not only remain at one trophic level but it is also at two multiple trophic levels as well so in most ecosystem all the pyramids are upright upright means that the base is um base has a larger surface area and uh, the top apex of the pyramid has the least surface area it starts from bottom to top bottom is the base okay it is not inverted in a reverse triangular form but in a straight upright or uh, triangular or parametrical form producers are more in number and biomass than the herbivores and herbivores are more in number in biomass and carnivores also, energy at lower trophic level is always more than the higher level. Okay, so what it means to say is that there are three types of pyramids that you can see in this picture. One is significant. <coughs> one, is <coughs> excuse me. So, one is significant, signifying only the number. Okay, so as you can see, the number of the grass is very much higher than the number of rabbits which is very much higher than the number of snakes, which are in turn higher than the number of eagles, okay? So this is the um, representation of the pyramid in terms of the number, okay? So what it means is to say is that the producers are more in number. Okay, so producer, this is the producer, this is primary consumer, this is secondary consumer, and this is tertiary consumer. So producers are more in number, okay? This diagram shows about the biomass, 
in which the biomass of the producers is 1000 kilograms of the herbivores is 100 kilograms of the primary consumer is 10 kilograms and of the top carnivore is one kilogram only okay so the producers are more in biomass also okay, than the herbivores the producers are more in so this is thousand kilogram this is hundred kilogram okay and the herbivores are more in number of the biomass and the, more in more in number okay and also in the biomass than the carnivores so these are the carnivores the primary and the secondary carnivores okay and also at the energy level the lower trophic level lower trophic level is that of the producers the energy incident uh, the incident sunlight onto the uh, primary uh, onto the producers or the pyramid autotrophs the energy incident to them is at the highest level highest level of energy comes at the lower trophic level and then the second lower level of the energy is at the herbivore or at the primary carnivore and then it goes on to top carnivore so the energy also keeps on decreasing from bottom to the top at the bottom is highest level of energy incident out of that some percentage of, the, of that is converted and rest goes to the herbivores then some percentage of energy is converted and consumed by the primary car carnivore and after that, by the top carnivores and the predators. Okay. Now we go on to understand the examples of in inverted pyramids. Okay. So when an insect's feeding on a big tree, that is an example of the inverted pyramid. So what it means is to, uh, for example, if at a first, at an at any region, the trees are less in number, and the insects are more in number. So then the non parasites or some insects, these are not the producers. These are at the primary carnivore or secondary carnivore level. Okay, but they are higher in number than the producers. Then it is called as the inverted pyramid. The pyramid of biomass in C is inverted because the biomass of fishes far exceeds any phytoplankton. Okay, so what it means is to say is that the biomass, this is the uh, biomass of the fishes, it exceeds, it is higher than the biomass of that of the phytoplankton. Okay, here it is eight grams per meter square biomass, and it is just four grams per meter square of biomass. Okay. So whenever, even in the examples of uh, biomass or the number or the energy, whenever the uh, stage of that trophic level, which is higher in number, has more energy or biomass or the number than the uh, species at the lower trophic level, then it is called as the inverted pyramid. Pyramid of energy is always upright. Because when the energy flows from topic trophic level to the next topic level, some energy is always lost at heat at each step. What it means to say is that only in examples of the uh, ecological pyramid, which are represented in the form of number and the biomass, the possibility of the inverted inverted pyramid is uh, applicable. But inverted pyramid which represents the energy it is always upright it can never be inverted because energy always flows from uh, bottom most trophic level to the higher trophic level okay and all the time it is not that suppose the energy level at the producer is high almost 100 then the energy would automatically increase in primary carnivore or the herbivore no it is not the case the energy is always lost and how it is lost? It is lost in which kind of energy? The energy is lost in the form of heat. So this is why the pyramid of the energy is always upright and not inverted. So we'll understand the limitations of the ecological pyramid. So what are its limitations? It does not take into account the same species belonging to two or more strophic levels. So it just takes into account upon the uh, generalized form of consumers or the um, primary consumers or the secondary consumers or producers. But it does not consider the same species. 
So if it is predominated to two or more trophic level, then through the pyramid, we are not able to understand the number or the biomass or the energy level of that single species. Okay. It assumes a simple food chain that almost never exists in nature. It's, it does not accommodate a food web. What it means to say is that usually in a food web, we it is not that it is not true that one kind of a species would be able to kill another type of species. Okay. For example, if you take into the example of um, some species, for example, if there are too many wolves, okay. So and there is a lion also okay so it is a possibility that if there is one wolf and one lion the lion could kill the wolf okay so then it comes into top predator as lion and the secondary consumer as the wolf okay because the tertiary and the last most level of the consumer which consumes is other types of consumers is called as a tertiary consumer okay so lion kills the wolf when it is one on one end number but if there is an opposite possibility that happens that the wolves outnumber the lions, okay? For example, there would be one lion and 25 to 30 wolves. And if there is no space for the lion to go to anywhere, okay? It is highly possible that the wolf would kill the lion and will feed upon it. So that is, um, so that is not being considered into the food chain. It only accommodates it does not accommodate a food web. It accommodates that whichever level of, uh, whichever degree of the consumers a species belong to, only it would consume the degree of the consumer at its on bottom level and not at the um, up level, not at the top level. Because even if there are realistic uh, conditions of outnumbering in outnumbering the species, even if it is at a top level of stage of the ecological pyramid saprophytes are not included in the ecological pyramids even though they play a vital role in the ecosystem so one more limitation is that in the ecological pyramid saprophytes are not included Now we'll move on to the nutrient cycle. The amount of nutrients, carbon, nitrogen, phosphorus, calcium, etc. Sir, what is saprophytes? Yeah. Um, just a minute. I give you the clear. Yeah, so what was the question? What is saprophytes? See, uh, in the diagram, as you can see, uh, there are producers, there are primary consumers, secondary consumers, tertiary consumers, okay? But then there are uh, decomposers also, which decays on the dead body, which, you know, consumes the dead bodies, okay, when it gets decayed. So the decomposers or the saprophytes, which feed upon the dead organisms, so those living entities which consume the dead organisms are called the saprophytes. As you can see in the ecological pyramid, those are not mentioned. So that is why it is telling the limitation that even though they play a vital role in the ecosystem, how it plays a vital role? It plays a vital role, for example, if one of the consumer dies, okay, quaternary consumer, tertiary consumer, secondary consumers, okay then the body if it is not consumed by the decomposers okay if suppose our uh, organism or the species gets dead okay it is consumed by uh, whatever other level of species by the consumers okay but then there would be still some remain uh, remains that would be there okay which would not be eaten by the top level consumers okay if it is kept like that if the dead thing is kept like that then the whole Place, the whole earth would be consisting of only dead things okay that could lead to many problems so to consume of the dead the sacrifices are needed okay so those are the species that consume the dead organisms and they play a vital role but sadly it is not included in the ecological pyramid so this is what it means thank you sir yeah Nutrient cycle, what it means is that the amount of nutrients present in the soil in a given time is called the standing state. 
and nutrients in the soil. What are the those nutrients? So those can be calcium, carbon, calcium, nitrogen, and phosphorus. It varies in different kinds of ecosystem and also on seasonal basis. It can be a possibility that the number of nutrients present in Rajasthan desert is different from that present in Kerala. Okay. It can also be different as compared to uh, Assam. Okay. So it varies upon the region. The, um, the nutrients, then, uh, the number of the nutrients, it varies upon the ecosystem. The ecosystem is different at different regions. So is the amount of nutrients at that region. And it also depends upon the standing state, also depends upon a seasonal basis. For example, the amount of nutrients present in the soil in winters could be less than that in the summers. So it varies upon the season also. Nutrients are never lost from the ecosystem, they are recycled again and again. So there's one more law of energy that no energy is being destroyed, it just converts from one form to another form. And so also it is applicable upon the nutrients. Nutrients are never lost from the ecosystem. They are recycled again and again. Okay. So as you can see in the example, first we will understand the last point. The movement of nutrient elements through various components of an ecosystem is called the nutrient cycle, the bio -ge uh, geochemical cycles. What it means is that the when the movement of nutrient elements happen, okay, it could be from the soil to the producers, to the primary consumers, to the secondary consumers, and the tertiary consumers, okay. So the movement of nutrient sediment to various components of the ecosystem is called as a nutrient cycle. So as you can see in the diagram also, the uh, carbon dioxide is being consumed by the um, So as you can see, the sunlight incident right is goes onto the trees. It also goes onto the grass. Okay, the carbon dioxide is also um, intake. Um, it's it's also taken by the trees. Okay, as we see the structure of this tree, it keeps on growing. The nutrients are gone to the roots of the tree as well. Okay, from there, the nitrogen is released and goes onto the organic matter. The organic matter of the soil is the soil goes to the root of the tree and the tree gets the energy. So it is recycled here as well. Okay. And the weathered bedrock, those also gives energy to the soil roots of the tree. Now there's a word that you can see. Okay. So the decomposition is happening of that seed. It is not a living thing. That tree, you can see there is a cut tree over here. So it is it has become dead. But if it is kept like this for ages, for years, if it's not decomposed, then the energy would not be able to transfer from one trophic level to another trophic level. Okay, so in this way, the energy is also being transferred. Okay, and here it is showing that nutrient losses also keep on happening. So nothing to worry about. Okay, it varies in different kinds of ecosystem and also in seasonal basis. And nutrients are never lost from ecosystem; they are recycled again and again. The movement of nutrients elements through various components of ecosystem is called as a nutrient cycle. Okay. Now we understand about the ecosystem services. The product of ecosystem processes are called the ecosystem services. What it means is that the processes that happens in an ecosystem, okay. So we'll understand about that products of that ecosystem process. Those are called the ecosystem services. For example, in an ecosystem services, we need most kinds of things, such as we need a water, strong economy, uh, well-being. We need food, water, and material in that ecosystem, public health, land use, pollution, climate, policy, air, soil, land, and water. So ecosystem provides us services of healthy forests. It purifies air and water, mitigates droughts and floods, cycle nutrients. So the mitigation of droughts and floods would not happen if we do not plant much of the trees because the decorative plants or the small plants 
that those which are sort small in size, they will not protect you against short surfers. You need heavy, long trees, strong trees, which have planted like five, ten years ago, and now they will give you the benefit of fighting against the um so so as to be able to fight against the uh, problems such as the droughts and the floods. Okay. The other ecosystem services that are provided are the cycle nutrients to generate fertile soils, pro uh, provide wildlife habitat, maintain biodiversity, pollinate crops, provide storage site for carbon, and also provide aesthetic, cultural, and spiritual values. Okay, so you need not remember all of them, only what you can just understand them. Okay, and you can remember the services that are provided by the ecosystem are which can be few remember just few of them okay such as purify air and water mitigates natural calamities cycle nutrients generate fertile soils and after that after generating fertile soil uh, you can note down provide storage site for carbon okay so these are few of the points you must remember and list if you remember that's good also So now the ecosystem services, um, it is talking about Robert Costanza and his colleagues have tried to put price tags on nature's life support system. Researchers have put an average price tag on US dollar 33 billion a year on fundamental ecosystem services. To preserve the ecosystem services, such level of um, such amount of money has already been put onto. Okay. This is um, so. Out of this total cost, the soil formation accounts for about 50%. Soil formation about of the 33 trillion dollars. So it it is consumed by the soil formation only. And um, the cost of climate regulation and habitat for wildlife is about 6%. Okay, so this is just for the information it has been given, not in, that much important to for the exam part of you. Okay. So that's it for the ecosystem. The ecosystem topic is completed. Tomorrow we start the new topic. Okay. Any doubts or queries? No. Always said that energy is neither created nor destroyed, but it changes the form when we are learning the pyramid. Uh, it's always um, the energy is lost in every level of the ecosystem. No, it is not lost. It is conceived. The thing is that it's converted from one form to another. Yeah, it is converted. It is um, converted from one form to the another. Okay, it is produced. It is from converted from the producers to the herbivore to the primary consumer to the tertiary consumers. Okay, so that the is the energy is lost. That's the word that you were using while you were explaining the pyramid. Yeah, I'm seeing that that 10% or 1% of that energy is converted and utilized by this some other trophic level. Okay. But when it is saying that 10% of its it is energy is utilized, what happened to the 90% of it? So 90% of that is converted into the heat. So it is not actually called as lost per se, not lost, just the conversion into the heat. Just then why is the word convert not used and why is lost used? Because it is Very not misleading, right, sir? Because it is not utilized in a proper, uh, because it is not utilized, that is why the term lost is used and not converted. If it had, it would have been utilized, then we would have said that it is converted. Okay. It is not utilized with the other trophic level, that's why it's called as lost. But actually, nothing is actually lost. Even the heat is utilized in some other forms. So that is why energy is converted. So here, it is only about the pyramid, what is happening in the pyramid and at each level of the pyramid. What is your doubt? My doubt was about the um, the energy that's lost. And I think I have got the answer, sir. You answered it. Mm -hmm. No, that is true. But the second question that you asked about. Uh, what you are saying that from in between inside of the pyramid yeah so uh, at the primary producer level the energy is a hundred percent right yeah 
and when it goes to the primary consumers 90% of the energy is lost mm -hmm. that 90% of the energy you are always using the word lost lost because it's lost from the primary consumer level yeah but it's not lost in totality like it's not gone into yes. oblivion it is not lost in totality converted into heat but yes. it's not being used at that level at, at yes. the primary consumer level yes yeah you got it sir. yeah <clears throat> okay so any anyone else Consequences and uh, of these um, are are they not important because we are meddling with all this and we are changing because of our lifestyles and all that because of the um, what the are inventions and the um, kind of lifestyle that we are living. Uh, yeah. The ecosystems are destroyed. Very much, very much negatively affected. Yeah. So a, there might be a, uh, aren't there any questions around what is happening because of human intervention? See, I'll tell you one thing, usually, so you're trying to talk about um, like how... No, I'm talking from an examination point of view, sir, because you have explained all, uh, everything that's part of the ecosystem and how it's formed and what happens there. But in reality, we do not have the uh, the upright pyramids we have the inverted pyramids so the thing is that uh, inverted in the form of the numbers okay not in the form of energy only in the yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. so that that is because uh, because of the human uh, yeah human intervention they're yeah. changing the balance of the ecosystem which is leading to a lot of changes at different levels of the ecosystem mm -hmm. So my uh, thought was there would be a lot of questions related to what is happening at each of these levels because of the human intervention, the the consequences of negative human uh, interventions. So usually such questions do not come. Okay, such questions are not asked also because so the thing is, see the ex um, questions usually. It's only gives upon the general point of view. Okay, so the general detailing would be just given that um, the human being does this and this and all that. Okay, it cannot give upon the detailed answers. Why it doesn't happen? Because the purpose of the education and the purpose of uh, imparting the education. So there is a syllabus that is designed at the top level. Okay, it has to compensate. It has to provide such kind of an education that it does not become one-sided okay it has to take uh, take into account everything even if it is not true if, even if it is not right on a humanitarian ground but still it happens why because what i mean to say is that for example if such kinds of question comes in the exam okay if there would be so many questions that would be uh, in such a way that would showcase that human beings are really part of the problems of damaging the ecosystem so the students would get more of it. The students would be uh, very much, you know, considered. See, I don't think it would, would be so direct. Like you said, Robert Costanza and his colleagues, they tried to put a price tag on the uh, on the uh, nature's life supporting services, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, if, uh, if these kind of things are considered, then definitely the government of different countries or even um, I... I think it's UNESCO or something. I, I don't know which world the organization in, at the global level looks into this, but there might be an organization which looks into all of this and questions related to that. Mm -hmm. See, the thing is that there's not just one organization. There are multiple organizations. One is promoting of the, one organization is promoting the environment to conservation of it. Another organization is promoting the technologies, advances. Another organization is promoting about the health services and all. Okay, for example, WHO and etc. Okay, so it could also it could it usually happens is that if you are advancing one kind of an organization and its goals, then the goals of some other organization would be compensated or would be killed off. Okay, 
for example if you are trying to do technologically advancements it doesn't happen just by itself the planet earth is not infinite in nature for the technology to advances to happen there has to be some composition that would happen that happens in the form of nature for example if you build up new buildings build up new um, centers infrastructure you just cannot build them out of thin air you just not build them out of the, like at an infinite space you build them at a place where they were trees so you cut those trees you damage those environment okay so the thing is that um, even if one organization works towards conserv conservation of thing, but it cannot just completely work upon it because there are other organizations which are much powerful, okay? And the other goals has to be compensated, has to be considered as well, okay? So, and as you can see, the technological advances are happening more, okay? In comparison to the recreation of the trees or build, or, you know, like, planting of the trees and not the decorative plants for the um, which are good to the eyes of human beings only okay so it means that technological advances are more of a priority for the human beings for the top one person than the conservation of the environment so there is not not much that you can do because um these organization of our pa part even if the organization have a different uh, sister organizations but they are working they have, there is a one parent organization okay so it's like that so there's not much nothing much you can do about it yeah uh, i think you will continue with the global warming and all that right sir these are all part of the probably the the imbalance in the in the ecosystems also causes uh, global warming and effects of global warming that yes. you're also covering right yeah we it will depend uh so see it would be covered but mainly we would focus more on the examination point of view okay so yeah in brief everything would be talked about so not much of a detail so to the um yeah organizations that are um, keeping uh -huh. a guard on these uh, uh these uh, global warming effects and all that would would those also be taught sir uh, not much in detail, just in specific and brief. That would just cover the example end of you. Anyone else? Okay, then we end this meeting. Thank you, sir. Yeah.